Hello and welcome. I'm Ruth and if you've never been here before, I'm a paper crafter and I've been a blogger and a demonstrator for lots of years. And um, this channel has mostly been just trying to share some of my interests with you. So today, if you haven't already subscribed, I'd love you to do that. And that way we can keep in touch and you can let me know what kind of videos you like and what kind of things that you'd like to see coming up in the channel as well. So for today's video I've decided to do a little project on using up some of your patterned papers. Now I'm not going to stop you buying or advise you to stop buying patterned papers. They're absolutely lovely. I adore them. I have got stacks of them. Too many to even show you because I'd probably be embarrassed. But a lot of them have been sent to me to use for work purposes, for demonstrating over the years or for magazine commissions and things like that. And I always like to get the most out of them, but I know when I've been out and about and demonstrating, people always say to me, oh, how can we use the papers? What do we do? Do we need a 6x6, six six, an 8x8 eight eight, or a 12x12? 12 12? How do we use those patterns up and how do we make the most of them? So I've just compiled quite a long list and I'm not even sure at the moment whether I'll get this all into one video. It may be two, it may be three, um, but I'll just go with the flow and see how we get on. First of all, don't waste any of this and just remember that you've paid for it and you want to get your value for it. So as you can see, whenever you open up my paper pads and even in the packs there, there are lots and lots of different little pieces inside where I've already gone ahead and cut these up because you never know when you'll need or when you'll want to use some of the bits that you've already cut up. So they can all be used and used to good effect as well. And you can just have fun with them and just enjoy them and uh, that way they don't end up becoming a great big stack in your craft room or whatever. Use them and enjoy them. That's the best way I think. First things first, I think I'll just start off with a very very basic idea and it's um, a 12 by 12 pad that I've picked out. Now you'll notice that some of the paper pads that I've had sitting there while I did the introduction were quite old and some of them were new. I'm not really trying to get you to buy new paper as I said. I just want you to use up what you've got. But this particular pad is still available and I'll put the link in the description down below if you want. Most of the others I'll be using actually aren't but I'm just presuming that you'll have something similar or something with the same idea in your stash. So I have just taken a 5 by 7 card here. I have cut a mat of my patterned paper and made the image on the patterned paper the focal point of my card and then I have matted it onto some paper. So I've just picked out the deeper shade in the back here of this deep rose pink and I have matted it onto that and put it onto my card and then now I have taken a die cut so I've just used a thank you in similar colours. I've picked out the cream the same as the background here and I have picked out the same colour as the uh, background mat and I'm just going to glue that on top and that's a very very simple way of using up some of the paper which um, sometimes I think when we look on a 12 by 12 page you'd think a pattern that size would really have to be used in a scrapbook but go ahead chop it up and use it on your cards. Now I've double cut that sentiment so that it brings in these two the colours of the background and the background of the uh, paper itself there and that is so simple it's a really really easy way to use your patterned paper but I've also got some morning dew drops here you could use whatever you have this is these are clear so I'm just going to add a little bit I always test some out at the side first but I'm just going to add some of them as dew drops onto the flower here and that just gives a tiny little extra bit of dimension now those are a bit milky looking at the moment but they will dry clear and they'll be absolutely beautiful so that was a very, very quick and easy card. I'm going to do another similar one in a moment, but just to finish this one off, I just wanted to show you that not only have you got the card with the pattern paper on it, but you can cut out a little piece of paper exactly the same size and have your envelope and your card coordinated. On this one, I have just come slightly down below the line of the fold there on the envelope. You could either just stop that right across here or you could continue it on further down but 
There we are. And I'm going to do another similar one here. So I've got a smaller card this time. This is from the same paper pack. And I have cut this out in landscape. And I have picked some pink paper, pink card, that just fits on uh, and suits that beautiful pink rose there in the foreground. I've done exactly the same with this for the envelope. Because I have cut this from landscape to go on the, the card at this orientation, I've then been able to get a little sentiment to go on down here. And again, I have double cut that. So once in white, uh, because that's the colour of the background card, and then once in pink for here, and then going to put that on there. And then I've picked out some beautiful translucent jewel drops, which I'll put on these uh, buds or berries or whatever they are there. And that's another really simple card. And now I've got some glitter drops and I'm just going to add them onto the little bee's wings here. And number two is changing up a background on a patterned paper to add some dimension with drops and glazes. So I've picked out this is a rather large, it's a 12 by 12 uh, patterned paper and again you'd look at that, I think, and think that would have to be used for a 12 by 12 scrapbook page or something like that. So what I've done this time is I've taken some of my crystal glaze and some of these glitter drops again and I've changed this one up again. So it was very dull and really needed cheered up a little bit but I didn't want to lose the subtle effect of it by adding lots of garish colours on top of it. So this crystal glaze was just perfect for that and what I'm going to do now is add some more just onto the petals of these flowers. My suggestion with that one is just make sure if you're wanting to keep these areas separate as you can see I've done there I've left a little gap in between so that they don't all join up and flood in and then become one uh, just big mass and then I'm going to add some crystal drops on here and again this colour tones in with this because it's quite a subtle effect I'm looking for on this card And to finish that one off, I'm going to put a little die cut butterfly and add it in just here. So this is quite flat and, and I've added some dimension with the crystal glaze and the glitter drops. But now to add just a little bit more interest but still to keep it subtle, I've taken the little die cut butterfly and I've kept the body flat but I've, I've uh, bent the wings up and he's, he, she or it is just going to go on there. My next tip is to not forget that you can mix and match different patterns. So while I tend to use a plain background for the mat and then layer a piece of patterned paper on top, it actually looks really, really effective. If you look through your paper pads and pick out a colour in one of them and uh, try to match them up. So these are from two completely different paper pads. But I've used the same idea in this one and I've used some gingham patterned paper and it brings out the colour of the flowers in this one and I'll be making that one next. So for this one I'm going to glue these two together and then take a large die cut and place it over the top just on here but I'm also going to add some white blizzard glitter drops onto these little flowers here after I've glued this on. So this is another cool way to use your paper up. As I showed you in the last one there, I've got the gingham paper and this one to match and I'm going to layer that on top. But I love to see all of these flowers here and when I look through the, the pad, you can see <laughs> I've already cut these out, but individual flowers here can be used either as toppers or to add on to the top of this. So what I've done then to bring all of this one together is I've used a piece of the gingham behind, the flower on top 
and then I've taken some of the gingham again and I'm going to put that across here and that will bring that all together but I've also taken this little flower here and I, as you can see that's the one I've cut from here and I've put some a foam pad on the back of that and I'm going to pop that up there just to give that a totally different look. I have taken a, a die cut sentiment which I've inked with an ink pad so that it just matches up here. It was white to start off with and that's going to go on there. But I've also taken another part of this paper pad here and this time I have cut out a spray of flowers and I'm not going to pop this up on 3D foam pads but what I'm going to do is just pop it on there and then I'll define around the outside of that one with some of the um, glitter drops and then I'm going to add some gems onto that and just that little bit of dimension and by adding this die cut which goes over the top there so it shows that it's not totally onto the page some of it you'll see coming over this gingham part and some will come over here and that's another way to use that one. The next two cards that I'm going to make have, have similarities in that I'm going to ink the edges of them. So the first one is straightforward inking and I've used some of the ideas that I have in the other cards that I've just made as well. So patterned paper for the mat for the background and I've trimmed that to size here. And then a different pattern paper from the same pad here. And then I have gone and found a page in that same pad. You're bound to have paper pads like this where there are large elements that you could cut out as well. So what I've done there is I have looked through that and every now and again there's a full envelope. So I've cut the full envelope out once and I have then cut out another three and they're not full envelopes but it doesn't actually matter, they're just the same size and I'm going to just glue them up together like that and put this one on top and add some twine around it. Then there's another little um, big actually page in the, in the album as well and it has stamps all over so I have already gone ahead and inked those up and those are going to go on there as well. So all I'm going to do is I've got some ink here, this is hybrid ink but you could use whatever ink you like. I'm going to hold the paper in my hand and just swipe the edges like that. On my next card I'm going to change these papers up by not only inking them but by distressing them. So I was actually going to show you the difference between what a card just being inked and inked and distressed was going to look like and make the same card twice but then I thought quite often people stick to using the brown ink and I just wanted to show you that any colour of ink can be used for distressing. So I've picked out these beautiful um, papers here. I have tested this ink pad, this is at Laguna Bay and it's a deep turquoise one and it looks really well with that. But before I ink the edges this time I'm taking a paper distressor and this is, is a little tool that has inside each of those compartments here where the, where the opening is there's a little blade and it's very safe because you're holding on to the outside of it here and the blade is enclosed. But what you'll do then is run this down the edge of the paper and then it gives you that rough effect which you can then ink. Now you can leave it like that or you can distress it as much as you like. In fact you could even rip it a little bit after that. So I'll go ahead and distress these layers.
So I've inked all those layers up and then I cut this from another paper pad. This was a, a page that had lots of sentiments and toppers on it. And I've just added that on 3D foam pads there. I think you can just about see that. And then I've cut this from paper again here, from patterned paper. And I've just distressed the edges of that and inked it as well to match in. And I've put some 3D foam pads on the pieces that are going to go directly to the card. Oops, doesn't want to come off. And I'm going to glue the rest of the topper to the to this. So I have a very long list. That's definitely not all of the patterned paper uses. So um, I'm going to wrap the video up now because, well, for two or three different reasons. I have ink on my hands. I have paper everywhere all over my craft room because it has taken so many paper pads to work this out. Uh, I have everything everywhere and I don't like a mess. So I don't want to carry on with it. I don't want to prolong the video either. I'd love you to come back and see the next one. So I'm not even going to tell you what's on the list, so you'll just have to come back and find out. But I hope you've enjoyed this. Now, don't forget, please let me know what you think. If you've enjoyed it, do you like this type of video? Because I'm trying to be a bit more general in some of these videos where I show you to, how to use up some of the things you've already got. I've enjoyed this. I actually really enjoyed looking back through some of the papers and things that I already have. Um, oh, you know, this one's got to be my favourite, but that's, that is just my favourite colours, but it just pops out of that lot to me. So we've got the focal point, and you can see that the jewel drops have dried lovely and clear now, just like, it's actually yeah, morning dew, and it just looks like dew drops on the, the peony rose there, and the jewel drops on here, similar. And then this one with the glitter drops on there, it's beautiful. These ones have the paper popped up and other pieces cut out and stuck on here and the uh, glitter glue has dried there so that's looking really well. And this one then has the crystal glaze on here and the glitter drops on here. And I don't know if it shows up as well there as it looks here but it's beautiful. And then this one with the inking and this one with the distressing and the inking. So don't forget if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would love you to do that. And don't forget also to hit the notification bell, and that way you'll know when the next video comes up. And in the meantime, enjoy those patterned papers, have a look and see what you can do with yours, and let me see what you've come up with as well. So, looking forward to hearing from you, and I'll be back soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.